what is going on guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over how to succeed on console slash controller in cash cups and other competitive tournaments. Now I initially planned on making this video a few weeks in the future because there aren't even any cash cups in the game right now, but with the PS4 Celebration Cup almost exactly a week away, I wanted to make sure this was available to those of you guys planning on playing in that tournament. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's start this off from the very beginning with the general strategy of how to succeed in these competitive events. Even though almost every event is going to have slightly different scoring systems and overall formats, the way you want to play shouldn't really dramatically change unless it's just a totally crazy scoring system. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see console slash controller players making in these competitive events is overvaluing kills and therefore playing over aggressive. If you watch someone like Unknown Army or Wavy Jacob play competitive events, it probably seems like they're getting an absolute ton of kills per match, and to some extent that definitely is true. I mean, I basically made an entire video about Jacob's Cash Cup win from a few weeks ago where he got something like 90 kills in 10 games. So I think that a lot of people see that and then they want to copy that playstyle because they believe it's the best way to be successful. But for 99.9% .9 of players, basically unless your name is Unknown Army or Jacob, playing for endgame and getting placement points is always going to be your best bet. And that's the case even in events like the Solo Cash Cups that don't really reward placement all that much. Like I broke down in one of my previous videos, the max placement points points you can get in a cash cup is 10, which honestly isn't all that many. However, if you take a look at the leaderboards in any given platform cash cup, you'll see that probably 95 out of the top 100 players have more placement points than elimination points. You'll also see that a lot of players in the top 100 probably get way less eliminations than you would imagine. The absolute highest eliminations per game you'll see will typically be around 4 to 4.5, however most players in the top 100 fall in the range of about 1.5 to 2.5 per game. So if kills are that low in an event that kinda under rewards placement, imagine how unimportant they're gonna be in an event like the PS4 Celebration Cup which over rewards placement. Instead of there only being 10 placement points up for grabs, it's gonna be 25 while the value of kills is still exactly the same, one point each. I have a feeling that you're gonna see tons of players making a solid amount of money with a ridiculously low amount of kills. So it's really important no matter what can competitive event you're playing to take a look at the value of placement versus kills and heavily factor that into your playstyle. So now that we've covered general mindset and strategy, let's get a little bit more specific about how to succeed in every part of the match. A super important aspect of succeeding in competitive events that always gets a lot of attention is your initial drop spot. I'm definitely not going to say anything revolutionary or totally unheard of before, so I'll keep it short. You definitely don't want to land anywhere super contested because early game fights are so RNG, especially in competitive, but also landing at a spot with very minimal loot just because you know it's going to be uncontested is also bad. Sure, you might always make it to the later part of the game, but you're going to be at such a loot disadvantage compared to everybody else alive that it's going to be really hard to get the high value placement points. Also, when picking a drop spot, don't only pay attention to the amount of chests and loot spawns in the immediate area. You also want to consider your rotation path once you leave your initial drop spot. This is where you factor in things like, am I close enough to the middle of the map where I either get first safe zone every time, or I'm at least close enough to where even if I don't get it, I don't have to rotate super early to prevent getting stuck in the storm. Is there anywhere nearby I can fish? Any other other likely unlooted areas along the way, etc, etc. All of those are important aspects of picking a drop spot, and you need to make sure you address them before you even play a single game. Now we get into mid and end game, and this is where things get really important. 
Mid game is definitely a little more simple, but there are two things I want to emphasize that will definitely help you here. The first tip I can give you for mid game builds on what we talked about in regards to not playing over aggressive. Plain and simple, try to avoid fights while rotating in mid game whenever possible. If you see an opportunity to third party a fight against two weak players, or maybe storm hold someone that just got out of a fight, sure, that's probably worth it. But taking anywhere near an even fight in the middle of matches just isn't worth the risk the majority of the time, especially if you're rotating. Also, when rotating from your drop spot to the early safe zones, don't be scared to tank a little storm damage to get to the favorable part of the zone. Sometimes people are so scared of minimal storm damage that they'll rotate into a super chaotic area with tons of enemies and fights going on around them. Trust me, you definitely don't want to do that. The much better play in that scenario is to take maybe 20 to 30 extra storm damage to rotate a little further in a different direction to ensure that you're safe once you get in. This is especially true if your white healing is slow like a med kit or band-aids, because that means once you get into the zone, you're gonna need an extra 10 to 15 seconds to heal up. So if you rotate into an area with a ton of people, there's a good chance that a smart player is gonna see that you just came out of the zone, and then he's gonna W key your box because he knows you probably need to heal. So as long as you do a good job of looting your drop spot and avoid taking unfavorable fights in the mid game while rotating, you should consistently be able to make it to end game. And in competitive, this is where everything's on the line pretty much. One thing that people always wonder about in end game is when should I go for height and when should I stay low ground? Getting ultimate high ground during moving endgame zones puts you in a prime position to win and also get easy elimination. But obviously, because everybody knows that, it's going to be very heavily contested the majority of the time. Therefore, I would only recommend going for height when you're ahead of the safe zone. And by that, I mean you're already in the moving zone and it's coming towards you, so you aren't going to need to rotate any further. Trying to take height while you need to rotate forward to get into the safe zone is like trying to drive and read a book at the same time. It's just so counterproductive, and you're going to make yourself such an easy target for the players that rotated early and already had the zone. They're just going to storm hold you with RPGs and constant AR fire. Your life is going to be miserable. And this doesn't only apply when it comes to getting height. Just in general, when you're ahead of the zone, that's when you want to turn around and go for kills. But if you're a late rotator with the zone on your back, your main focus is just continuing to move forward and you only want to fight when you absolutely have to. Speaking of rotating, another huge tip for endgame rotations is to try to get on your own level while rotating in. Some people mistakenly think that there's only two levels in Fortnite, low ground and ultimate high ground. So if you're smart, you can actually take advantage of that and make rotating a lot easier. If 50% of the remaining players are rotating on the ground, and maybe 30% of them are going for high ground, if you build up 2-3 to three levels and then rotate forward, you're much less likely to find yourself meeting other players head on as you go. And that's because typically players only really worry about what they can see. People rotating on the ground will shoot anyone in front of them, or maybe immediately to their side, but they're not going to stop and try to kill a player they hear two to three levels above them, because that's really difficult to do, and they're more worried about rotating in. So if you can consistently put yourself on a different level than the majority of the lobby, rotating is going to feel about ten times easier. And the final tip I want to give in this video is a bit of a 200 IQ one, so it's only for the people that watch the entire thing. When you play any kind of competitive event online, like a cash cup for example, don't queue up right away when the event starts. Instead, wait about 3-5 to five minutes after. What that does is it makes it so that all the people who queued up immediately and died off the rip in their first game will then be with you in their second game and your first game. And theoretically, since those players died, they're likely worse than the players they died to, so the lobby you play in will be a little bit easier. 
So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down the comment section below. Let me know your best placement in any kind of competitive event that you've ever played in. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.